Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a few minutes at how to use some of the tools built in to the build a Pi script that can help you complete your first successful WinLink connection. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey guys, before we get to the content today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. All right, so I've had several uh, emails, several comments. Uh, I've even had a few telephone calls with operators that uh, find WinLink a bit frustrating in the very beginning. Uh, they aren't able to make a connection to uh, any station at all. And I, I try to give everybody the same advice here uh, in, in the way you go about choosing your stations. We have to think about this just like we would any other type of communication, whether we're working with uh, digital like JSA Call or PSK31, or whether we're working with voice we have to first take into consideration the time of day. Some bands work better depending on the time of day. So 40 meters typically will work better uh, in the daytime, especially for NVIS. And then in the evenings, we wanna swap over and probably use uh, 80 meters. Now, it also depends on your antenna and it also depends on the receiving gateways antenna. And that's not something that we can really get a lot of information about, or at least not a way I found online. But let's think about this for a second. If you have a 40 meter vertical antenna, then you're going to have a fairly low takeoff rate on your radiation pattern. What that means is you're gonna be able to probably reach out a little bit further than I could using a horizontal NVIS configuration in my antenna. So if you were running a 40 meter vertical antenna, uh, and again, this depends on time of day as well, uh, you probably don't want to try any stations that's uh, say 200 or 300 uh, kilometers away from you. You probably want to look a little bit further out. Now, if you're running an NVIS antenna, uh, you probably only want to try stations, say, out to maybe 750 kilometers and closer to you. So we have to take a lot of different things into consideration. Now, if I'm using an NVIS antenna, but the receiving station is using a vertical and we're too close together, he may hear my call, but I may never hear the response because of the takeoff angle of his signal is actually skipping right over my location. So we have to kind of think all of that through when we're trying to uh, make a WinLink connection. One other piece of advice that I can give is start with 40 or 80 meters. Uh, I have terrible luck on 20 meters. I'm not sure why that is, if it's my antenna configuration, or exactly what, but it seems like I can never make a wind link connection over 20 meters. I know a lot of guys that do it all the time on a regular basis, but for me, I just have no luck. So I tell everybody, try 40 or 80 first. I typically have uh, better luck on those bands. Okay, so now that you have uh, decided on what band you want to work and uh, what distances you want to try based on your antenna, Let's go ahead and uh, try to make a PAT auto connection. So we'll choose option five from the menu. And let's try 40 meters. And it's gonna ask me, what's the max distance I wanna try? I'm gonna tell it 700, and this is in kilometers now, keep that in mind. Uh, so 700 for my max, and my minimum distance, I'm gonna give it 600. We'll go ahead and press return, and then it tells me, okay, you've chosen 40 meters with a minimum distance of 600 kilometers and a maximum of 700 kilometers. And then is this correct? Yes, no, or exit. So we'll go ahead and choose yes here and press return. 
Now, we'll just stand by and let this do its thing. It's going to open up the RDOP GUI so that uh, we can kind of watch if uh, a connection starts to happen. And you'll see that uh, this starts taking off pretty quick as well. So I'm going to try to turn the radio up a little bit so I can also hear what's going on over here and see if uh, we're going to have any luck with this first station. So it doesn't look like uh, we've got really anything. Well, I messed that up completely. So it doesn't look like we've got uh, any connections really coming in right now. This station is not, uh, not answering us. Uh, so we'll just let this continue to run through. I believe uh, Pat Winlink or the, uh, uh, the RDOP modem tries a connection a total of 10 times before it gives up. Now the reason I've been told that it tries that 10 times before it gives up is a lot of your gateway stations are actually scanning several different bands. So in order to make sure that you kind of uh, make the call at the time when it's scanning the particular band you're looking on, uh, we need several uh, attempts to try that connection. And I'm not sure who decided that 10 was enough, uh, but that's the way it is. And to my knowledge, we can't change that number of connection attempts. If somebody knows something different, leave it down in the comments below because uh, sometimes I feel like 10 is just a little bit too much. All right, so now we're trying K0SI, and you'll notice we are starting to get some activity over here in our RDOP GUI. So we'll let that run for just a second and see if it actually can make that connection. Uh, looks like we've got some other interference uh, on that frequency as well. Hopefully it's not going to completely disrupt our, uh, our Winlink connection here though. So I do see that uh, K0SI is replying to us, and it looks like we've got a pretty decent signal now. Uh, you'll notice our quality right here is 83. This over here will kind of give you the speed that we're running at. Uh, that's a pretty slow speed uh, that you're seeing right now. Uh, the green on the receive frame, uh, or the act frame, indicates uh, that we heard the last packet correctly, or the last... Uh, uh, data packet correctly and if we see a red one then it indicates that uh, that's a knack and it did not copy our last transmission or we didn't copy that station's last transmission but it does look like we're going to uh, be able to well I say that maybe we're going to be able to complete this connection I just got a knack from him that last go around in fact there's another one and oh that one's an act okay never mind uh, so hopefully we will go ahead and get this completed here in just a second. As soon as this wraps up, I do want to show you guys uh, one other thing about how we can add this station to our alias list using the PAT menu system. And I want to show you where the log file is found uh, so that if you do use this uh, auto PAT tool to locate a station, you'll know if you, if, you know, if maybe you weren't paying attention, you didn't catch which station it connected to. It's actually going to write that to the log so that you can easily find that. All right, and there you go, guys. It looks like that uh, just completed entirely. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that volume down. Now, let's go over. Uh, we're going to open our file browser, and let's go over to the Documents folder, and let's go to the mylog.txt. We'll double-click on that, and when that opens up, you'll see the last line right here tells us that we connected to K0SI on frequency 7102 and uh, that was successful with AutoPAT and then of course it gives you the date and time back here as well. So if uh, once, you're, once you know that information now we can go out knowing that that's K0SI we can go add that to our alias list. 
So from the main, uh, the main page inside of PAT menu, let's press option one for manage PAT. And then let's choose add alias RDOP, which is option two. We were working with 40 meters, so we want to tell it 40 here. And then uh, what call sign did we uh, want to add? So K0SI. And we'll go ahead and press return. It gives us our results and then it says, would you like to add this station to your alias list? We'll choose yes here. And it'll go ahead and add that and restart everything for us. So let's head over to our PAT mailbox real quick. And this may be a little bit difficult to see due to the small screen size, but if we go up to uh, make a connection or the connect option, right here where it says select an alias, if we choose our drop down box, you'll see that K0SI is now an option for 40 meters. All right, guys, I hope this helps you. Uh, kind of figure out what stations you can connect to using the tools built into PAT menu. And then once you've had success with uh, AutoPAT, you'll know now how to get those aliases added into your list. All right, guys, we appreciate your views and be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. Don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.